16, six years ago, the FBI began investigating the Trump campaign over allegations of collusion with Russia. Soon after Trump won the presidency, the investigation and allegations made it into the public domain, and those allegations have persisted ever since. For four years, there was a cloud over the Trump presidency. The media and House Democrats were obsessed. It was wall-to-wall -wall press coverage. House and Senate investigators looked for evidence of collusion and found none. Special counsel Robert Mueller was appointed, and he looked, and he found no evidence of collusion. But the media and some Democrats persist. Words like treason and prison and agent of a foreign power were recklessly thrown about. And when the dust settled, more FBI employees went to prison than members of the Trump family. And more Clinton campaign lawyers were indicted than members of the Trump family. And more FBI personnel were fired or otherwise lost their jobs than members of the Trump administration. John Durham was supposed to find out what happened and why, and what caused the FBI and other government agencies to investigate a presidential campaign. Why did the FBI mislead congressional investigators about when and how the investigation began? What evidence of collusion ever existed? Why did the FBI rely on a discredited former British spy? Why did the FBI rely on opposition research bought and paid for by the Clinton campaign? Why did the Clinton campaign have such easy access to both the Department of Justice and the FBI? John Durham was supposed to find out. It's been three years. Do we know more than we used to? Is anyone paying attention anymore? Will we ever know how and why the FBI began to investigate the Trump campaign? When you lie to the FBI, they indict you. When the FBI lies to you, what happens? So far, not much. Joining us now is Cash Patel, former chief of staff to the Department of Defense, former federal prosecutor, and the man who came to Capitol Hill in 2017 looking for answers. Cash, it has been six years since the FBI began looking into members of the Trump campaign. Do we know yet what the predicate for that investigation was? Trey, it's great to be with you, and it's been six years since I met you. I can't believe that when we started that investigation with Chairman Nunes and Johnny Ratcliffe. Um, we, we, you and I know more answers than the American public because you and I know a lot of classified information that has not yet been put out. But what John Durham is finally putting out in his indictments is an extensive amount of information showing the expansive nature of the criminal enterprise I believe he's investigating that the Hillary Clinton campaign not only orchestrated line of effort one, the Steele dossier which you covered, line of effort two, the Alpha Bank server, which was now responsible to the Hillary Clinton campaign and Sussman, the indicted lawyer, but line of effort three, which we just learned about, that the Hillary Clinton campaign not only orchestrated two vectors of, of, of impacting the Trump presidential campaign, but the third and most salacious one, which is the one that John Durham just laid out uh, in his most recent thing. So I do believe we are closer. And Trey, as you know, as former federal prosecutors who handled this work, you and I spent two to three years working on building indictments and cases before we hit the X. John Durham is working on unraveling the biggest criminal conspiracy in U.S. history. Yeah, and my fear is, you know, the jury in a courtroom cash, they can't leave. They got to sit there and listen to us whether they want to or not. I just, the longer <laughs> it takes, I think, the more it gives the media a reason to kind of dismiss whatever he comes up with. But let me ask you this, okay, the dossier is in the summer of 2016. I mean, that's when it kind of comes mm. into FBI consciousness. Something happened before then. Something happened before the dossier, before the FBI ever found out about the dossier. Mm. And that's what I don't know. What was that something that happened in early 2016? Do you, do you know or do you think we will ever find out? I think what we can surmise is its line of effort three. In the spring of 2016, pursuant to John Durham's latest pleading, the uh, Michael Sussman, the lawyer for the DNC campaign on behalf of Hillary Clinton, 
orchestrated an agreement with the tech company that he laid out in the latest pleading that says this tech company obtained a sensitive arrangement with uh, the United States government to infiltrate the White House servers. Yes, that is absolutely what happened, but that, I believe, is what was generated and beginning in early 2016, which John Durham has finally laid out. And for anyone that wants to attack us, they're saying, they're not my words, they're saying John Durham f found information to show that this tech company obtained a sensitive re arrangement. And, and Trey, you and I both know what that means. That means that uh, Hillary Clinton campaign's lawyers uh, got together with the United States intelligence community because that's the only way you can get an arrangement to spy or infiltrate White House servers. I'll tell you what else shocks me, Cash, is the ready access that the Clinton campaign had to the upper echelon to the Department of Justice and FBI. I mean, do you think you and I could get a meeting with the general counsel of the FBI? I, I mean, I, I could well, get I one when I was a member I, of Congress. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, Trey, you could. I think I might be on uh, lesser footing when it comes to landing those types of meetings. But in all seriousness, you're right. Who, who in America can walk into the number one lawyer at the Federal Bureau of Investigation and say, in 24 hours, I want a meeting and give you information? Who has that kind of access to the other intelligence communities that John Durham is citing? Very few, if any. And we're now learning that these people use their relationships for political purposes that were funded by the Hillary Clinton campaign to gain access to a candidate for president and then actually surveil a sitting president of the United States. And let's put this matter to bed. Let's not forget what Christopher Wray, the director of the FBI, said to Johnny Ratcliffe under oath. He said, he admitted that Chris Wray, that the FBI illegally surveilled Carter Page and the Trump campaign, and he, Christopher Wray, said under oath that there was corrupt activity by the FBI. FBI when they took that matter to the FISA court to surveil them. Cash Patel, you mentioned John Ratcliffe. You and Johnny know more about this. Um, I just <laughs> hope Durham finishes in time uh, for people to still remember what we're talking about. That's my hope. Thank you for joining us on a Sunday night. Look forward to visiting with you again soon. Thanks, Trey. Have a great President's Day weekend. You too. You too. Next, you get to ask.